Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk all about tramming. What is tramming? Well, tramming is basically getting the cutting tool or the head of your CNC router or mill, whatever it is, nice and square to the bed or to your cutting surface. So let's say you have a cutter like this. This is a spoil board cutter. If it's perfectly flat, you're going to go along and you're going to have no issues with it. Well, let's say it is slightly cocked off to the side like that and it's cutting. When you're done, you're going to get these noticeable ridges or grooves. And if you do a really small step over, you might just kind of get these weird humps, whatever. But you're going to be cutting with one edge more so than the other. So you can see in this extreme example, if you know the head is like that, it's not going to cut properly. That is the left and right adjustment, but there also is the forward to backward adjustment. If the head is sagging forward, you will still get that same issue. So what I want to do in this video is show you how to properly tram the head of an Avid Pro CNC router. There are some instructions um, that Avid has provided on how to do this, but it is specifically for wood. And I found that wood is just a lot more forgiving. Uh, mine was, you know, perfectly trammed according to their instructions. They had no ridges, no issues whatsoever. But once you start cutting aluminum, you will notice these ridges um, very quickly. Even like, you know, one or two thou out of tram, you will feel some ridges on the aluminum. So, Let's take a closer look at the machine and what we need to do to get it square and flat. To tram your router, you're going to need some measurement tools. Um, I've got three different options here in front of you. This is the one that I'm going to use. This is, of course, a tramming square. This really is the ideal way to do this. Most people are probably not going to have one of these, but the um, process really doesn't change a whole lot. Um, it's basically two indicators on either side so that you can see both readings at the same time. You can use a standard indicator like this. Um, these are really common if you don't have one of these and you're getting into um, CNC, you really should have one of these. This basically just goes into a holder. Um, so I have one like this. That goes inside the spindle. The other side goes into here and then you just sweep it around. You take a reading on this side, spin the spindle around and take the reading on the other side. The much preferred way to do this would be to use a dial test indicator just because these are a little bit more accurate. Um, so same kind of concept, you attach it into the arm, take a reading on one side, sweep it around, take a reading on the other side. But any of these will work and the process is pretty much identical. This just gives you the ability to take readings on the left and the right or the front and the back side at the exact same time. So before we go any further with the actual tramming process, you need to make sure that everything is tightened and bolted down. These screws, these screws, these screws, all the screws. If you have anything loose in your machine, whatever we do in the tramming is going to be absolutely pointless and you're going to have to do it again. So go through everything and make sure that everything is all nice and tight. The other thing to point out is that if you're going to do this and then eventually move the machine, that is also going to be pointless. Make sure that the machine is in its final place and everything is as final as it can be because once you move the machine or do anything to it, the tramming could actually get screwed up. So make sure that all of that is taken care of first before you start tramming. So I've got everything loosened up in the head. So it's actually a little bit wobbly right now and that's kind of what we want. So let's just kind of lower this down slowly and I'll show you just kind of what it looks like. Go a little bit faster. So yeah, we can see that this one's reading about zero, this one's reading about 10. Each one of these um, gradations is a thousandth of an inch, so about 10 thousandth off. Now there is an eccentric nut over here that when we spin it, it will just simply rotate the head. So this was pretty straightforward. You basically just kind of rotate this nut until both of these read the exact same thing and it is straight up and down. However, there is also the nod of the head, which is like this. So let's go uh, move the camera over to this side and I'll show you what that looks like because really we want to do that first and then adjust this because one will depend on the other. So I'm being a little bit sloppy with this video. Um, the thing that I didn't mention is you do want to start with a relatively flat surface. This spoil board has been flattened down. 
with my spoil board cutter. So it's kind of a chicken and egg. You kind of need to get relatively close to where you want to end up. And you can see there's, there's no ridges. This is perfectly flat or perfectly flat. So you want to get to at least a good starting point because if this has a bunch of ridges in it, whatever we do here is going to be completely irrelevant. So definitely kind of do the basic tramming. Like you can follow this video to get it basically trammed and then go through, cut your spoil board, and then kind of really get it dialed in. So I should mention that. So I've got everything tightened up on the head. So now it's um, nice and tight. And you can see that there's about a 10,000 difference, uh, maybe eight, I'd have to like really look at this, but there's definitely a little bit of a, um, it's nodding down this way, you know, in the extreme example. So what we need to do is we need to basically shim the bottom of this out so that we get rid of that difference. And there's no um, eccentric nut, unfortunately, this time. So what we're gonna do is actually loosen the head, insert shims on the underneath side until these read the same thing. I'm using some stainless steel shim stock that I had on hand and I end up using three strips of it um, taped together and that came out to around 0.4 millimeters is what is underneath the head. You could use aluminum foil or any non-compressible material. When I say non-compressible, wood will compress, plastics will compress, um, paper will compress. You're gonna wanna use something that will not compress when you tighten it down. So aluminum foil, shim stock, things like that. Um, Look around, you can find some like aluminum tape at um, the hardware store like Home Depot Lowe's. That would work just fine. Just anything that is going to be a nice solid surface to press against. Now, of course, if you really wanted to get fancy, you could um, take the difference between the two gauges. You could make a triangle. You could do a little bit of trigonometry and you know figure out exactly how much you needed to shim, but it is kind of easier just to do a guess and check method and be sure to tighten everything down, then loosen it, then tighten it down because when you tighten things, all of the dimensions are going to change. So don't assume that when it's sitting there loose, that's gonna be the dimension that you want. You're gonna to need to tighten it, see what that looks like, then loosen it. And it really is kind of a lovely frustrating process just going back and forth, back and forth. So that looks pretty good and that's about as close as I can get it. As you can see, there is quite a bit of flex in the table and this is the reason why I end up going with the aluminum table up front because MDF will just naturally want to flex a little bit. The head itself has a bit of flex if we move it around and that is just to be expected with a long gantry machine like this. So get this one as close as you can and then we'll move on to the left and the right adjustment. So now we need to get the left and right tram of the head set properly. The process is gonna be pretty much the same, but we have this lovely eccentric nut, which will help us to slide everything around. Now be careful, you don't wanna just go and um, completely loosen all these screws. Um, we've got the one, two, three, and four. We don't wanna just make all these super loose and flop this around because then we might have to go back and do the other process. What we wanna do is just loosen them just enough to where we can slide this eccentric nut and then tighten it down. We do not want to just loosen everything up. So let's go ahead and do that. Just go ahead and loosen everything up just a little bit and keep the top right screw, the black one, um, relatively tight and the bottom right corner relatively tight. The top left is going to be the pivot and so just you know move it slowly. Keep in mind that for the eccentric nut, when you tighten that down, it's going to want to spin the eccentric nut. So either hold on to it with a wrench or just assume that little bit of extra movement is going to happen. And here we are, we are very close. I think we're maybe within like a half or a quarter of a thousandth, which is totally fine considering the head itself is going to move a little bit. And I did double check in the other direction that is still all set. So you can just go through and tighten everything as tightly as you can. I'm gonna come back and not use one of these and use an actual um, you know, wrench like that get everything tightened up. We'll make a test cut on aluminum and see what this looks like. Be 
sure to check the description down below for all of the stuff I mentioned in this video, including the tramming tool. It's only a hundred bucks, and if you're going to be doing a lot of CNC stuff, it could be a worthwhile investment. But the other ones are relatively inexpensive and definitely worth having as well. Part of the reason for doing this video was I got a new end mill from Daytron that is a um, two flute facing end mill. So I'm just running a very simple facing operation here. And as you can see, the end results are pretty good. Um, I still need to do a little bit more with my coolant setup and feeds and speeds, but overall, I think this machine is fairly well trammed. Thanks for watching. Check out my Facebook page for any updates, and see you in the next video.